Hi, I'm Randy with notarubicon.com and today I want to talk a little bit about these Baofeng radios and how you can program them for off-road use. I want to give you a quick overview of how these radios work and what they can do. They're great for hiking, caravanning, anytime you've got two or more people that need to talk uh, and you're going to be within a mile or two of each other. These Baofeng radios are cheap, they work really well, and they're quickly becoming more popular than CB radios. And that's one of the reasons why we want to do this video, because a lot of people show up on the trail and they don't know how to use them. They're a little bit confusing, they're a little bit overwhelming. So I want to quickly show you how easy it is to program one of these Baofeng radios for off-road use or any type of use when you're going to be talking to another person or a small group of people. So here are a couple of the common radios that a lot of people have. The most common is the UV5R, which is very inexpensive and very popular. But this programming also applies to other models, basically any radio that looks like this. Even though this is a different model number, this is the F8HP, which is basically the exact same on the inside, but it's got a little higher output. This one also has a larger battery so that it can last longer with that higher output, but they're basically the same radios. And everything that I'm gonna be talking about applies to any of these Baofeng radios that have this basic look. These radios will operate on ham radio frequencies if you have a license and if you know what you're doing. The way that we use them off-road, most ham radios will not work on those frequencies and that's because ham radio does not operate on the GMRS band that we use when we're off-road. Now if you search the internet for more information on any of these Baofeng radios, you're going to see a lot of hate from many ham radio operators. You'll see them complaining that these radios are cheap, so they're not as good as their fancy ham radios. The quality control is very low. They have spurious RF output. And all of those things are true, but for our purposes, using these radios off-road, talking to a group of people within just a mile or so of where you're at, we don't care. None of that stuff that the ham radio guys complain about applies to what we do. So basically they can complain all they want. I don't care. These radios are great, versatile, cheap little radios. They get the job done. And if I drop one in the lake or I run it over with my Jeep or I forget and leave it out on the rock somewhere, I don't care because this thing was only $26. I'll order another one from Amazon and I'll have it here in a day. Now, as I mentioned, you can use these as ham radios, but the way we're gonna use them for off-roading or hiking or whatever you wanna use them for, we're not gonna use the ham radio bands. So we use what's called the GMRS band. This is a set of frequencies set aside by the FCC for use on personal radios and personal communication. Technically, to use one of these radios in the GMRS band, you do need a license, but there's no test. All you do is send some money into the FCC and they give you a license number. That license is good for your entire family and it's good for, I think, 10 years at a time. And the other reason that we use the GMRS band is because that frequency band is compatible with these cheap little, what we call bubble wrap radios. These radios you can get at Walmart or Target, and they're usually 40 or $50 for a set of two or three. They operate in the GMRS frequency range, but they're much simpler to use. Okay, so let's talk real quickly about what all these buttons are and how to program them. There's really just a couple of buttons that you need to worry about. Now you could program these using the software that either comes with them or that you can download off the internet, but for using these off-road and in the way that we use them, it's not necessary. That's just more complicated, more things to figure out how to use and more things to go wrong. When we use these off-road, the way that we use them and the way that I'm gonna show you, you can do it all right here by just pressing just a couple of buttons. I know all these buttons can be confusing, but they're really very simple. The VFO MR button switches the radio between frequency mode and memory mode. So you'll see up here in the top when it's on frequency mode, when I switch it to memory mode, it switches to a stored channel that I've previously set up and it displays the name. Switch it back to frequency mode and it displays the frequency. Now to get that name in there and that channel programmed, I used the software. So right out of the box, when you hit this button, you may not see any difference. This AB button switches the radio from the upper frequency to the lower frequency shown on the screen. These radios are dual frequency. You can have two different frequencies or two different channels listening at the same time, but you can only transmit on one at a time. And if you look real close, you can see that little arrow there. That indicates which frequency you're currently on. If I hit AB, 
you'll see that it changed to the lower frequency so that now I can transmit on that frequency. Switch it back and it's on the upper frequency. You can be listening to both of those, but you can only transmit on the one that you've selected. A lot of times when we're out on the trail, someone will have their radio programmed properly, but they're playing around, they're not paying attention, or they set the radio down and the button gets pushed and now it's in the lower frequency. And they can hear us because it's still monitoring on the upper frequency, but when they talk, we can't hear them because they're transmitting on the lower frequency. So to pre prevent that from happening, another real important button is the lock key. Pressing and holding that will lock the keypad so that no matter what you do, it basically locks out the keypad. And you can see up there, real small, the little lock indicator. To unlock it, just press and hold the lock key again. And it is now unlocked and whatever I type in is going to be displayed on the screen. For our purpose, all of these other buttons, other than the numbers that we'll need to punch in the frequencies, you don't need to know. Switch between frequency mode and channel mode, switch between upper frequency and lower frequency, lock and unlock the keypad. Those are all you need to remember. So to program one of these, it's really simple. All you need is a frequency. So your trail leader will give you a frequency and tell you that this is the frequency the group is using. The frequency that we use that we have specifically chosen because it's in the legal range and because it is compatible with the cheap little bubble wrap radios is 462.575 or 5750. This is all you have to do to program it in. First, you make sure that the radio is not locked. I want to make sure that I am in frequency mode or VFO mode. So I know my frequency, keypad is not locked. I am in frequency mode. All I need to do is punch in that frequency. 462575. And that's it, I'm done. This radio is now transmitting because it's got the little arrow up there at the top on that frequency on 462575. One other change that you might want to make is that these radios have high power and low power settings for when you transmit. Now, when you're in a, on the trail and you're within a mile or so of each other, low power is usually all that you need. And the low power setting is going to make your battery last a lot longer. So to switch in between high and low power, you want to make sure that the keyboard is not locked. I can then change the power just by tapping the lock key. So you see right now there's no little letters displayed up there. If I tap it once, it's now showing L. That means low power. When it's not in low power, it's in this particular model is in high power. The higher power F8 model has a high, medium, and low. So you can see right now that it's in high power output. I'm going to unlock the keypad, and then I'm going to tap the lock. That is a M for medium, and I tap it again, and now it's in low. So I'm going to be transmitting on lower power. The battery is going to last a lot longer, but I'm not going to be able to get out as far. And that is all there is to programming these Baofeng radios. If you have any questions about using the Baofeng radios, or if I missed anything or wasn't clear on anything, please leave a comment below. There are links to these radios, including where you can find some of these cheap little bubble wrap radios in the information section below. Those are affiliate links so that if you click on one of those and then buy something, I do get credit for that sale. So thank you very much. You don't necessarily have to buy anything. Just go. You can price shop and get an idea of what these cost. Usually Amazon is the least expensive place to get them, but you can shop around. So thank you for watching and we hope to see you on the trail.